It was 1994. Most of Peter Hall's co-conspirators had informed on each other and were headed for prison. And Kemba Smith found herself awaiting the birth of her baby and awaiting a plea bargain. In terms of um, the plea, basically when I signed it, um, there wasn't too much established. All that was established was that um, was that I would cooperate after sentencing with whatever information that I knew. Um, and that I would receive a, a sentence reduction, but that wasn't written on the plea agreement. And when I signed it, I expressed to my attorney that I was very scared in signing it and things just didn't seem right. And after I signed it and slid it underneath the window, he said to me, well, you know what, I'm scared too. The U.S. attorney argued that Kemba was an active participant, not an innocent bystander. Rather than take her chances with a jury, Kemba pled guilty to money laundering, lying to federal authorities, and conspiracy to distribute 255 kilograms of crack and powder cocaine. What was quoted to my parents through my attorney was that I would plead guilty and get 24 months. And this was based on my attorney's conversation with the prosecutor. Kemba says she was shocked when her sentence was imposed. 24 and a half years with no chance of parole. It is a very difficult thing for someone listening to this program to understand why one would have a guilty plea to an offense and end up with 24 years without the possibility of parole. That just raises in and of itself to a lay person and a whole set of questions. Why is somebody pleading? to get 24 years. Neither Kemba's original defense attorney nor the U.S. attorneys who prosecuted her would grant court TV an interview. I think most prosecutors, and in my experience as a former prosecutor and dealing with both other federal prosecutors as well as state prosecutors, the vast majority of these men and women want to do the right thing. They are trying to keep people who harm citizens off the streets for the time that the law allows them to do so. Kemba admits she did break the law but she believes her sentence is out of proportion. Kimba was guilty of doing the money laundering. I mean, she had done that. She did lie to authorities, took out apartments in her name for him. She made some very dumb decisions. When people do make mistakes, uh, but for society to come down and punish her in a way we don't punish first degree murderers. We've got people convicted of murder one who do not serve 24 years in prison. Kimba Smith has spent the past five years in federal prisons where she gave birth to her son Armani, the baby she was carrying at the time of her arrest. After I had Armani, one of the marshals came into my hospital room and gave instructions to the two officers that were guarding me um, that I had to be shackled to the bed and that they were the two officers need to be posted watching me at all times and I couldn't have any visitors except my son. Amada's birth is very difficult for me to talk about. The way my daughter was treated, no regards for the fact that she was a human being at all. She was treated just like she was an animal or something. During those two days that I was in the hospital, um, I basically stayed up the whole time because I wanted to spend as much time as I could with Armani. You know, it, it was rough, and that was a period where I didn't think that I would make it. Kimba's son, Armani, now four years old, is being raised by her parents. We have a special bond. A very, very special bond. He calls me daddy because I'm the only daddy he's ever known. And he calls my wife, Grandma. And he calls Kimba, Mommy. Uh, he's very loving. Uh, he's precious. Armani visits his mother in prison every two months. Kimba says the visits are a blend of joy and sorrow. When the visits come to an end, um, there's always, you know, that pain there. But I 
I try not to um, focus on the pain when he leaves because if I do, I won't make it. strength and think positively. Armani is too little to understand what happened, but he knows his mother is locked away behind bars. Just before he started school, when he came to visit, I told him, you know, I said, Jamal, you're going to be all right. You're going to be all right. And he was like, you know, I understand. While Kemba and her parents battle emotional upheavals, they're also fighting to overturn her guilty plea and win a trial before a jury. These appeals are important. I mean, and they do, you know, they're a shot. But so often, they give a fam the families and the prisoners a sense of false hope because there really isn't a very, a very good uh, rate of the appeals being won. Even hardliners say the current drug laws and mandatory minimum sentences may need an overhaul to correct potential injustices. If you do have a scenario where you have a complete reversal consistently, where you have your top level people getting your lesser sentences and, and your mules and your lower level people getting the harsher sentences, then one does need to look at that because you don't want the system so out of balance that it loses any deterrent, uh, any deterrent effect. Members of Congress do not want to be labeled soft on crime. It's very, very simple. Any bill, any amendment to lower sentences is soft on crime. Any bill that lets some person who is sentenced as a drug dealer get out earlier is soft on crime. End of story. Congress intended to get the drug kingpins off the street, to get rid of the drug problem. I think that a lot of these women are not the people that were intended to be serving these harsh sentences under mandatory sentences. You know, they're not the ones that the laws were intended to catch. And they are victimized twice, by the system and by the men who get them involved in these cases. So many women are left holding the bag. Outdoor is incarcerated on drug charges, yet she was not an addict. She never sold drugs. She never benefited from the sale of drugs. And yet, our legal system has said, you must spend 24 and a half years in jail. For what? Why? While Congress wrestles with this question, Kemba Smith and Amy Popel may spend the next two decades in federal prisons.